Agency in Motion Continuing Ongoing Education Series. This is a series specifically designed for agents, producers, advisors, and agency builders in the financial services industry. And today, really what we're talking about is getting ready for the most important quarter of the year and how do we prepare to get ahead? How do we boost our performance using systems that help us with time management, activity, and accountability? So we'll open this up just, first of all, talking about some things that we make sure that we understand going into any possible use of a system. One of the things we absolutely have to understand, guys, is what gets in our way of success. Is it our lack of clarity, our lack of motivation? Is it the wrong associations that we have? Is it just that we've developed a lot of bad habits along the way that we need to break? Um, or is it just the self-doubt? We don't give ourselves enough confidence. We don't talk ourselves up enough uh, to be successful. Whatever it is, if it's one or a combination of these things, we have to identify just like what you do for our clients. We can't solve the problem until we know what the problem is. So identify what's going on and then find active solutions that will help you overcome this stuff and get you into a, a better place for your business. You have to, guys. You have to have a blueprint for success. Once again, going back to what we explained to our clients, if you're trying to get nowhere, if you don't have any goals, dreams, destinations, then we tell our clients you don't need our help to do nothing, to go nowhere. Same thing for your own self. When you're talking to yourself, what is it you're trying to accomplish? What is the blueprint for success? What am I trying to accomplish? How much time is it going to take? What do I need to do inside that time to be successful? And in that blueprint, you have to understand preemptively start to look at roadblocks that you think are going to come up and preemptively start to overcome those in your planning and preparation. However, when you get inside the trenches, you know, when it's game time, so to speak, you're going to have some roadblocks that you didn't anticipate come up. And then in real time, once again, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, um, you know, part of our daily routine is we're just solving problems, our own problems, our clients' problems, our partners' problems. So as this stuff comes up, once again, just like you teach your clients, don't dwell inside the problem, dwell inside the solution. Same thing for yourself. And then you have to close the gap between strategy and execution. Strategy is what you anticipated was happening. Execution is actually what's happening. And that gap, there's a lot of money there. You close that gap and watch what happens for your business. And then one of the other things that we have to understand and kind of digest is that what you do coming out of this meeting today, this hour, this next hour, has a direct impact on your results for the year. So you need to make sure to understand the importance of the time right now that you have and either what you're doing to achieve your goals or what you're not doing to not achieve your goals. You have to make sure and realize and appreciate the moment right now and be great in that moment. Also, setting goals way down in the future, down the road, it just allows you to postpone those results and then reset that same time again and again and again. If you're setting those goals down as January for December, we're not doing anything for most of the year. And as you get closer to December, hey, I'm not going to hit these goals. I'll water them down. I'll reset. That's just a, a way to procrastinate. What you have to note is that it can happen and how it will happen and what does it look like right now. So not setting goals in the future, but setting those immediate goals, understanding those 90 day madman cycles and not if it can happen, but how it will happen and what does it look like when it does happen. So when you're talking to yourself, it's not if it's when this stuff is going to happen for you. And then your plans have to be certain and specific. You have something meaningful going on day to day for your life and your business. So what are you doing? When are you doing it? More importantly, why are you doing it? What is it meaning to the overall plan? And then finally, focus, guys. You have to make sure the focus really goes in two parts. The first part of focus is following one course until you're successful. You ever heard jack of all trades, master of none? So, so many times, you know, what you see is, people will start like so many different things and they'll never master one of those and they'll have five or six different things they're doing and they won't be successful at any of them. You have to concentrate on one thing until you become successful at that one thing. And then you can start to branch out your time a little bit if appropriate. And then also you need to understand you have to starve your distractions, feed your focus. When you're in focus and you know what you want to accomplish, 
and you know what that's going to be as far as meaning to you, your professional life, your personal life, your financial future, that's what you're concentrating on. And then also remember on the day-to-day -day interactions with your partners, your clients, the open market prospects, you have things that matter, you have things that you control, and you have that sweet spot, what you should focus on. If it's not things that matter and things that you control within that sweet spot, don't you know, give too much thought, energy, time, or focus to that. You got to be organized and technology helps us be organized. If you're somebody that's not a very organized person, technology will help you. But you have to understand if you don't get organized in your business approach, things fall through the crap, uh, the crack. And just like the gap between strategy and execution means dollars, same thing does your organization here. You know, build a checklist. How do you get organized? You develop the habits. Remember, the resolutions at the beginning of the year are meaningless. Those are usually broken by late January, early February. It's the habits and the routines that are going to change uh, you and your results. You have to plan ahead. You know, you have to embrace your natural inclinations. Consistency over perfection. Don't think that you're going to be perfect. And if you're waiting to be perfect, that's just a veiled way to procrastinate. You got to find a balance. You got to prioritize. You got to declutter and simplify your business model and your day and what you do. You got to measure your progress. You got to out automate or outsource whatever you can so that you can concentrate on those income producing activities. And then finally experiment. Sometimes things work. Sometimes things don't work. In my business, I've had plenty of things that work, plenty of things that don't work. Obviously, the things that don't work, push them over to the side. The things that do work, you continue down that path. And then finally, execution, guys, if you're have the best plan of action, the best preparation, but you do nothing to execute that plan. Everything that you did up to that moment is just a wish. So you can wish for something to have uh, happen or you can execute and make it happen. The last part of the model, the last part of helping you boost your performance and get ahead is the execution. That lies really in the make or break for what you're trying to do. And then in the execution, the consistency of doing day in and day out. Remember, the Hall of Fame doesn't come from a one season or two season. It comes from somebody who's had a long career of greatness. Same thing with you. You have to bring consistency. A little time and a little consistency can build a great foundation for something with meaning. There's no start and stop. If you come in and do a lot of work and then take your foot off the accelerator, that start and stop motion uh, continuously is almost like you never really started in the first place. So whatever you're going to bring to the table, bring it consistently and understand that that consistency is going to help you separate yourself from the crowd. Accountability is one of those things that no one or a lot of people really don't like. And I think that we call it, they don't understand it. Accountability is not something that's supposed to be put in place to punish you. It's to help you. And once you know, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what it's resulting in. This is working. This is not working. It's all just a reflection to make sure that you're on the right path. If you're not on the right path, you know, what do we need to do to be on the right path? But people either look at accountability as I'm just not doing it or I'm just too cool to do it. What you have to understand is the accountability is the glue that's going to hold everything together. If there's no glue, things fall apart very, very, very quickly. And your six steps to accountability is just, first of all, drop the excuses. Drop the excuses that you sell yourself. Drop the excuses that you sell uh, other people. And really be, you know, be honest with yourself about what's going on. Value others. Value your clients. Value your partners. Value your marketing relationships. Keep records of what's going on. Take responsibility for the good, the bad, or the ugly. Always do the right thing and act promptly with care. Get rid of the excuses and invite and welcome accountability into your life. You have to have wow moments. And we always talk about get excited about your business. It's not that you do the same thing every day in terms of I'm excited about this one thing continuously. I get excited about different parts of my business at different times, but I'm always excited about something about my business. And that allows you to have those wow moments. That's inspired action. That's an increased commitment. And that's the resilient determination or what we call grit, which is the secret ingredient for the recipe for success. Your level of effort is going to determine everything. And really, it's broken down into this easy to understand. What's your level of effort? The level of effort that you tolerate from yourself will define your life. That's one of the best quotes that you can take out of this particular episode today. 
Whatever you tolerate in terms of the level of effort, that's going to determine and define your life and the successes or the failures that you encounter. You've got to bring it. And once you do that, it's easier to expect and demand that from other people. You have to find motivation. Remember, the motivating factor is the, the why of what you're doing. You have the mission that you're helping people, but you also have to have some intrinsic motivation of, hey, why am I going at this every day? Why am I working hard? Why am I becoming an entrepreneur? Why am I sacrificing my salary, putting that on the line to do what I do? And motivation is going to come from different ways and intrinsic. You know, there's challenges, curiosity, control, fantasy, competition, cooperation, recognition. The one thing that I will tell you about intrinsic motivation is different from everybody. Some people really, really love recognition. It gets them going. Great. And that's what you need to go after. Uh, some people just like the challenge of, you know, putting something in front of them, overcoming that challenge. It's different for all of us. You have to find what motivates you. And then you have to go after that and continuously put that in front of you like the carrot. Because if you don't find the motivation, it's really hard just to get up every day and do something that you know, 98, 99% of the population won't do. In order to get out of your comfort zone and discover all that growth that lies outside the comfort zone, you got to find the motivation, the reason to do that. And you got to start doing new things. When was the last time you did something for the first time for your business, for yourself? As we get older, we do stuff for the first time less and less and less. It's important that we keep an open mind and that we try new things. The more that you learn, the more you're going to earn. And then finally, make action plans. Show yourself the way. And then that will allow you, once you trailblaze that path, to show other people the way. Remember, in your business, boring makes you money. And this is one of the toughest things for people to understand. You have to have daily activity, day in, day out. You have to have a follow-up. And you have to be uh, methodical in your approach. Remember, at the end of the day, you're in the contact business. You need to learn to talk about yourself, your business, you know what you do, how you do it, but most importantly, why you do it in the open marketplace. And then remember, we were just talking about this. Activity is going to get you through most of the learning curve. You know, you don't take the stairs into the pool, you jump in. Same thing with the business. You just got to jump in. Most of the learning is going to come from you going out there, making mistakes, learning from those, and then getting yourself into a better position. Perfection is just an excuse not to do. So if you're waiting around, sitting, reading this, reading that, getting this ready, oh, after July 4th, oh, after Labor Day, oh, after Thanksgiving, after the New Year's, always a reason to kick the can down the road. You just need to stop what you're doing and understand you're just tricking yourself into procrastination and get busy. Just start, jump in, do stuff, make mistakes, and then learn from those. The gold is in the follow-up. And this is an important part of being systematic. This is an important part about boosting your performance and getting ahead because if you're not following up other people are and they're going to create better outcomes make more money have a more abundant business than you are and the sole reason is the follow-up follow-up can separate a fifty thousand dollar earner from a half a million dollar earner you know that big of a gap can be just from follow-up so this kind of leads us into the discussion of, you know, there's a lot of different systems out there. There's a lot of different ways that you can have activity, accountability, you know, do all the things that we've been talking about today. The best thing that I've found that really helps myself, my business and other people around me is a 12 week year. We're getting ready to start a 12 week year that goes into an important quarter. That's August, September, October. And the reason that I like the 12 week year is because of the way that it's laid out. It's laid out in a way that allows us to really understand what's going on and allows us to go through the motions of getting to a point where we have the activity, the most concerted activity that we know is going to lead us to our goals. And then we have a way to measure that and we have a way to be accountable, not only to ourselves but to other people. Overall, guys, the 12-week year is going to allow you to be great in the moment, make every week count, connect emotionally to what we're trying to accomplish develop a plan of action, execute, not for the future, execute one week at a time, execute, review, execute, review. And then off those executions, you know, we can measure and that measurement drives results. We're going to be purpose purposeful. We're going to own our results. Remember, good, bad, or ugly. I see a lot of people start the 12 week year and they'll have bad results. They just quit. That's part of the process, guys. You have to, you know, learn more about yourself. You have to make great commitments. You have to perform in that moment. And you have to seek intentional imbalances. In order to get what you want, you're going to have to sacrifice 
uh, some other things in your life. You have to understand that. And the elements of high performance, there are eight elements. That's vision, planning, process control, measurement, time use, accountability, commitment, and greatness in the moment. These are the elements of high performance. This is another reason why I love the 12-week year. It lays them out, goes through those, and helps incorporate that into your plan of action and your activity. So you have to have a vision, a compelling vision that gets you up with a clear picture of the future that motivates you. An effective plan clarifies and focuses the top priority initiatives, not everything you do, like an activity list, what are the top things that you need to do? And then a process control, a set of tools and events that can align your daily actions with the most critical actions in your plans. Remember, the stuff that you probably don't want to do, the most uncomfortable stuff, probably the most important stuff that you need to do. And then measurement, lead and lag indicators provide comprehensive feedback necessary for informed decision making. If you're making data-driven decisions, your business will have positive ripple effects. If you're making just emotional decisions, your business will have negative ripple effects. And then time use, using your time with clear intention, not just coming in and wondering what I should be doing at any given day, but knowing exactly going into each day what you need to accomplish and then being accountable. Accountability is ultimately ownership of what's going on. It's a character trait, it's a life stance, and it's a willingness to own the actions and results, regardless of what's going on. Listen, every week, things are going to happen. We have personal stuff come up, professional stuff up, there, uh, stuff come up. There's other commitments, but you need to make a commitment. And that commitment is keeping your promises to others. That builds strong relationships. Keeping promises to yourself also builds character, esteem, and success. If you make promises to yourself and keep them, it builds your self-confidence. If you continuously make promises to yourself and break them, it's going to have a negative impact on your confidence. And then greatness in the moment. We've been kind of hitting on this time and time again during this episode, but the results are not the attainment of greatness, but simply just a confirmation that you're in it and you're doing it. Your vision, guys, is twofold. You have two visions. You have an aspirational vision and a three-year. Your aspirational vision is exactly how you want to live your life. As you look down the road and look at your life, what do you want it to look like? You know, who are you surrounding yourself? Where are you? Ultimately, what do you want to achieve with your life? This could include achieving financial independence, starting a healthy family, living to a, a, a you know an old age, whatever it is, that's your aspirational vision. Outside of that or really inside that aspirational vision is your three-year vision. 36-month vision, that describes the key objectives you want to accomplish and achieve within the next 36 months or three years. And then inside those 36 months or three years, there's a number of 12-week periods of time. They're going to break this stuff down for you and allow you to achieve. The ultimate goal is to achieve in 12 weeks what most others don't even achieve in one year. Leveraging the power of repetition to keep yourself motivated, to realize your vision. A vision is not something you come up with and you throw it off to the side. You have the ability to strengthen and develop your brain by thinking about a compelling future for yourself by regularly and repeatedly thinking about inspiring vision where you emotionally connect with the life you desire. So just like you're asking your clients, hey, look down the road. Where are we? What are we doing? Who are we surrounding ourselves with? If we meet these goals, you got to talk to yourself like that. Have a vision board, get excited, print out your vision, review it at the beginning of each day and at the end of each day, during your weekly review and planning sessions. And at any time that you're feeling a lack of motivation, go back to that vision board, and go back to your vision. If your vision doesn't compel you, if your vision doesn't motivate you, then you need to go back to the drawing board with your vision and find something that actually does. And then finally, set your 12-week goals. 12-week action plans also give you a better picture of what you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You have your goals, you have your tactics, you break those tactics down into individual actions. When writing your goals, really ask yourself, once again, just like you're asking your clients, talk to yourself the same way. How is your life going to be different if you accomplish these goals? This will keep you motivated when times are tough. Like I said, every day is not going to be a great day. Some days you're not going to feel like doing any of this. That's when you especially need a compelling vision that's going to re-motivate you. Remember to have a balanced approach. And I've done it both ways. I've only had work goals and I've had a combination of work, uh, professional and personal goals. I think it works far better when you have a mix. You don't need too many goals. You know, two or three, but have a good mix and a balanced approach and work on yourself from a professional and personal standpoint. And then break your goals down into action plans. Remember, 12-week goals are a bridge between your vision 
and your action plan. Your action plan prioritizes your work on a daily and weekly basis. If you want to know what your future holds, look at your actions. They're the best predictor of your future. Um, you know, if you looked at what you did yesterday or the day before, the day before that, would you hire yourself? If you were a hiring manager and you were interviewing yourself based on what you've done in the last few days, would you hire yourself? That's a great indicator of, you know, are you putting the time, energy, resources into it? your business like you need to. And then write down the critical few actions, not an activity list, guys, the critical few actions that you need to complete and achieve your goals. Assign due dates to them and then ask yourself, what actions are you going to struggle with? As you're looking at that action plan, what are you going to struggle with? Identify that early. And then what will you do to overcome those struggles? This preemptive plan makes it easy for you to overcome those obstacles as they arise. Remember, weekly and daily plans have the added benefit of helping you determine not only what to spend time on, but almost as important, what not to spend time on. If you're wasting your time, 12 week year will help you identify that as well. And then remember the accountability. Life is full of distractions. Planning and reviewing sessions can help you stay focused on what really matters. They're called WAM groups, weekly accountability meetings, and they help you. And the agenda for the WAM groups is getting a small group around you that's doing the same thing. Measure the results you've achieved towards your 12-week goal to date. Measure your execution to date and any leading success metrics. Set intentions for the upcoming week. Reconnect with your vision. We always say if you had a really killer week, an outstanding week, you know, um, go into the next week on that momentum. If you had a really terrible week, just reset. Go into the week and reset and look for better results. And then finally, carve out time for strategic work. Once you've created the vision, the 12-week goals and an action plan, it should be pretty clear on what actions are most important for you to achieve the results that you're looking for. Perhaps more importantly, you'll be able to identify all the actions you could do that won't actually contribute. Yeah, posting something, doing something online, that's all lower tier activity. If you have your top tier activity, your income producing activities, and you get those done every day, and some of the other stuff doesn't get done, that's okay. If you reverse it and do all the stuff that you don't really need to do, and you leave the most important stuff, and some of that stuff doesn't get done, that's going to be a problem. So you have the important to-do list and the not to-do list. Concentrate on actions that are going to be high leverage for you, depending on what your goals are. Remember Take note of your most productive time of the day and dedicate it to the most important work. No meetings, no personal phone calls, uh, irrelevant emails, or non-business social media. Now, obviously, if you're a night owl, you can't do business calls. You can't do meetings in the middle of the night, but carve out your best time. Figure out when you're going to be the best during the day and then really go at that time period. You know, Go all out during that time. The mistakes that we see with the 12 week here, why people fail. Number one common mistake, they're trying to change everything at once. You can't change everything at once. It's just gonna become such a clutter. You're not gonna get anything accomplished. You have to change you know, just a few things at a time. And the overall culmination of that over time is gonna help you change a lot. But you can't change everything at once. And if you try, you're definitely 100% gonna fail. Common mistake number two, not having a strong enough why. If you don't know why you're doing this for yourself, for your family, for your inner circle, for the charitable causes, whatever it is that your why is, whatever is on that vision board, if it's not strong enough, you're going to fail. Common mistake number three, not tracking your actions. Just going through day-to-day -day drifting. If you're not tracking your actions, you're not understanding what you're doing, um, You know that's not a system. That's just a hodgepodge random activity. Common mistake number four, Focusing too much on lag measures. You want leading indicators. And leading indicators are all about the activity that you're doing, the concentrated, important, top-tier activity, the income-producing activities. And then number five, the last one, going at it alone. If you do something alone, it's a lot easier to break the commitment to yourself, right? If you're in a small group where you got other people and you're meeting every week, it's a lot harder to break that. So by being accountable to yourself and joining one of these groups and going through with a small group, it helps you be more accountable. It helps you stay focused and it helps you understand that, hey, I'm in this with other people. If I bail out, not just hurting me, I'm hurting the group as well. Agency in Motion, this is all about building, operating, managing agencies in the 21st century. Today's episode, once again, just really about understanding how to get ahead, how to boost performance um, using systems like the 12-week year.